uh, safety stock is used to prevent a stock out. It's the amount of stock carried, and it depends on the variability of demand. Remember, we looked at that uh, uh, independent demand item. How often we order, what we call the desired service level and the length of the lead time, and our ability to forecast and control lead times. And this is usually the planner and the buyer's responsibility. The formula is safety stock equals desired service level time mad adjusted for uh, lead time. I'll explain that in just a second. We carry safety stock in MRP systems at the very lowest levels of the bill of material and the very highest levels of the material. When you tend to carry safety stock at the mid levels, at the subassembly levels, that can very much skew the planning process of MRP, which we'll look at uh, uh, in, on July 18th. The measures of uh, the variability of demand, if you look at uh, a simple bell curve, here are the occurrences of demand across a normal average. And you can see that if you use a standard deviation, the square root of the differences between the actual and the forecast squared divided by the number of periods, you get the standard deviation. Normally, we use the simpler method of the mean absolute deviation or the sum of the of demand uh, variations by the uh, number of periods, and we can therefore assign a probability of occurrence of an actual demand falling within this bell curve. So 98% of the time, we can say that demand is projected to be three mean absolute deviations away from the average. The service level, how much we want to allow the system to have stockouts, uh, increases with the service level. You see here we're going from 80 to 90. Here's our MAD uh, value inventory and carry cost. And you can see that the higher the service level, the greater the amount of safety stock necessary to carry to ensure that service level. So the higher the service level, the more inventory you're gonna buy. Uh, the safety factor, the basic safety stock calculation assumes that the replenishment lead time is equal to the forecast interval. So if you're forecasting on a monthly basis and your lead time is eight weeks, then you're gonna to want to adjust that mean absolute deviation by a factor that accounts for the variance between the forecast interval and the lead time interval. And this gives you a uh, table of what those uh, adjustment factors might mean or might be. And uh, again, we don't have the time to get into the actual uh, calculations, but basically you're going to modify your mean absolute deviation by that forecast uh, period. So here's a simple example of the uh, safety stock calculation. Uh, we've got a mean absolute deviation of 250 units. Uh, our lead time is eight weeks. We want 95% service factor and our forecast interval is four weeks. So if we uh, take the lead time by the forecast interval, you can see we've got a two multiplier. We adjust the MAD or the mean absolute deviation by that multiplier. If we go back to the previous uh, overhead, we can see two is equal to that 1.63. So we multiply the MAD times the 1.63 gets 408. 408 times the safety factor gives us a safety stock of 840. Now that's a statistical method of calculating safety stock as opposed to what we might call a heuristic or a seat of the pants or a thumbnail estimate of safety stock of two weeks of demand or however you calculate it. This is actually a statistical method for doing that. So if we summarize safety stock, we can see that safety stock is a permanent investment. So if the management wants 99% uh, service level, they're gonna have to pay for that in inventory. The higher the service level, the more must be invested. And we've got to take into effect that lead time versus 
forecast interval variability. And the reorder frequency uh, often uh, calculates how often you're going to expose to that. And there's another calculation that you can use to uh, look at that frequency of order length. And at MRP, when we look at that on July 18th, we'll see that safety stock basically raises the projected quantity on hand to this value. So instead of a net zero availability, if you have a safety stock value, it takes it up to that safety stock as the zero availability.